All right, people of God, we are back. Session four here at the hop. This is healing week, and we are moving on with the next portion of meditating on the word. Um, this particular portion of study that we're going to deal with tonight is actually going to be about the deposit of the word. Now, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> excuse me, this subject is extremely important. Uh, what we talked about previously, without this, you will be missing it. Turn to somebody and say, you need the whole thing, glory be to God. If nobody's there, turn to the angel and say, I'm getting the whole thing. What you say, that's how we believe it. Now. Let me say this. Um, I really want to just jump right into this because I want to. I want to get as much of this out uh, in the time span that we have. So turn over with me to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Uh, Proverbs chapter four, and uh, we're going to pick up at verse twenty. While you guys are turning there, just in terms of what we've already talked about, remember we established the integrity of the word of God, that you have to conclude that the word of God is true. And by your um, investigation of that word and meditating on that word, you're guaranteed to get results. So you have already established that the word of God is true and that it works. Your focus on is making sure you're in faith concerning it that you have an assurance of what his word says, and then you approach God on that basis, okay? We also established that God has made a covenant with his words and that he refuses to go against it. His word is his bond, okay? Now, you have to go back and re-listen to that if you missed it. I gotta move, okay? Now, over here, we're going to talk about the deposit of the Word of God. So I know that the Word of God is true, but that alone is not enough. I believe it. I understand that I need assurance of it and that He'll keep His Word, but I'm going to need corresponding action right here. I'm going to have to deposit this Word first place this word is going to need to go is in my heart, okay? Now, uh, Jesus in, in the Gospels made a statement that where the kingdom of God is concerned, that it's within you. And what's within you, the government of God is inside of you. And where he's talking about is in your heart. As a human being, you are a spirit, you are a spirit. You have a soul. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then that all lives in a body. So you're a three-part human individual. You are a spirit. You have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. You're an intellectual capacity. And you live in a body. Well, the Word of God works in your spirit, not in your mind. That's extremely important. Faith is a spiritual force. The word of God is spirit. Jesus said, my words are what? Spirit. Okay? Now, so the word of God, you've got to get it in your heart and not in your mind. And how do you get it in your heart is by depositing it. Okay? Now, Proverbs tells us practically how to deposit the word. Now look what he says right here in uh, verse 20. This is really interesting. He says, and I'm reading this in modern English version. This is Proverbs 4th chapter, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Okay? Now, the first thing you've got to understand is that you are going to have to attend to the word. Now, thank you, Holy Ghost. I, I will say that just like that. Now, a good portion of believers, it's extremely difficult to attend to the Word. And the reason why is because the Word that you're accustomed to hearing or the Word 
perception that you have of the Bible is that it's rule keeping, fear based, and sort of bad news. Now, I know you're born again. I know you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Go be to God. Evidence of speaking in tongues run all over the place. I know that. But if you don't develop a good news revelation about the word, if you don't realize that the word is actually good news, you're going to avoid it. Okay? So you're only going to run to it sort of to maintain and maybe get out of trouble. And there was an individual in the Bible that did this and the wicked servant is who it was and he referred to God as an austere man, meaning hard. Mm. This was the guy with the talent that buried that talent that was a million dollars and said, well, Lord, I knew you were a austere or a hard man, so I just didn't lose what you gave me. I just held on and maintained until the rapture came. And so I could go home to be with you. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. You need to understand that the gospel means good news and God has a overwhelming desire to do good to you, to bless you and make you a success in every area of life. Now, doesn't that make you want to run right there? Make you feel good, doesn't it? To know that my God desires to do good to me. Now, if you meditate, if you read the Bible, and you're not becoming convinced in your study that God sees you that way and that's his intention towards you, then you're studying inaccurately. What you're reading is incorrect, okay? Now, go back to verse 20 right here. Look what he says. My son, attend to my words. Make the word of God priority. Now, listen. The word of God, attending to it, needs to become a lifestyle. Out of 100% of Christians, I would say less than 10% meditate on the word as a lifestyle. We meditate, we read the word as maintenance, but we aren't aware of, we aren't aware of the power it really has so we don't meditate in it, immerse ourselves in it as a lifestyle. Watch this. Boredom, um, um, addiction, um, discontent, these are spiritual issues, not natural issues. You can't fix these things with activities, all right, or fellowship alone. You, these are spiritual issues that you've got to deal with and you've got to put spirit on spirit to defeat these problems right here. The way to do that is through meditating on the word in what way? In the area that covers your situation. Does that make sense? So I live through the word and then it rearranges my life and I find myself in overflow as opposed to living, watch this, from the outside in. You and I have to live from the inside out. We don't try to fix spiritual deficiencies with natural things. Does that make sense? So don't assume that by spending a lifestyle of meditating on the word that you're missing out on life. Now, I'm talking about meditating on the word. Watch this. 90% of you Christians assume that if I meditate on the word, it's so that I can preach. I'm telling you that what I am the most excited about in my life is not my preaching, is that the word of God is working for me. It is producing excitement, fulfillment, and adventure in my life outside of the pulpit, glory be to God. So when I get to preach or witness to somebody, it's overflow. Does that make sense? So understand that the word is designed for you to get your needs met. So you should be going in the word to identify the needs that you have. I have a financial issue. I need to go in the word and find out what the word of God has already said about my finances. 
and spend time investigating, meditating on it, connecting the dots. And if you do that, you're going to find out that you're rich. Glory be to God. Don't shoot me down. You're going to find out that you were created to increase is what you're going to find out. Now, my son, make attending to my word number one priority. This is the number one agenda in my personal life right now, every single day. And I have a very full life, glory be to God. I always got something to do every day. I always got something to do. And it gets better and better and better. And attending to the word is the number one focus of my entire life every single day. The word has produced success in every area of my life and it's still growing, glory be to God. You just watch, I'm telling you. Now watch. Incline your ear to my sayings. Watch this. Watch this. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Now, your heart has two gateways to it, only two. What goes in your heart comes from whatever is deposited through the eye gate and the ear gate where the human anatomy is concerned. Whatever is in your heart got there through your eyes or through your ears. Did you get that? Now, the kingdom of God is inside of you in your heart. Your heart is like a field. That field will grow automatically anything that's put in it. Doesn't matter, good or bad. Whatever touches its soil, it will automatically attempt to cultivate and produce it. Automatically. Now, that's why the writer right here is saying incline your ear to my sayings. You're going to have to put the word of God in your ears. Well, how do you do that? First of all, you need to make sure that what you're putting in your ears is good news. <clears throat> Where healing is concerned, if you need healing, you need to go meditate on the word of God concerning healing and you need to hear it. Now watch this. Let me give you something practical about this. How do you hear the word through your ears? Simply listening to, watch this, the engrafted word. You remember that scripture? Over in the New Testament, Paul makes that statement. The engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Let me translate that. Save is to heal, deliver, or make whole. And your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Emotional stability and security is a byproduct of the deposit of the Word of God in the ear gate. Did you get that? Now, watch this. The engrafted word translated in that text, and is that James that I can't turn to? That's either James or one of Paul's letters. But the engrafted word right there is the word of instruction. It's the word of instruction. Guess what that is? It's the preach word with an anointing on it and faith. If you have a, a pastor, uh, 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 Hop Ministries, that preaches faith, and you do, glory be to God, he preaches faith to me, I'm telling you. You ought to consider yourself beyond blessed. You ought to just get up every day and run one time for your pastor, uh, for your pastors, for Pastor Rob and Lady J. You ought to run because good news is in their mouth. Now listen, the good news in the mouth of that pastor is designed to provide the needs of those in that ministry. Did you get that? Ooh, I could talk about this for about five more hours, but I got to move. Now, I'm telling you that when you, you need to practice listening to good news. In the car, you're listening to too much music. Music won't replace this. Music won't do what the word will do. Now, music, praise and worship is a powerful tool, 
but praise and worship needs to work in tandem or follow faith, and faith follows the word. Deposit, word, faith, praise, supernatural manifestation is how it goes right there. Does that make sense? That's extremely important. Now, I'm in the car. I'm listening. You heard uh, Lady J talking about it last night or the other night. I'm listening to the Word of God uh, all day. It's in my house, in my house right now. The Word of God is playing. We don't. We're not. We don't have time for regular TV because we're we're prospering now. Can you watch regular TV? Watch what you want to watch. Glory be to God. That's between. That's up to you. But you've got to know what your spirit can and cannot deal with. And if you really want to prosper at a fast rate, you develop a regiment of letting the word of God going in your ear as a lifestyle, not within seasons, a lifestyle. It's top priority. I'm in the car. The word of instruction is, pr is playing. You know, you heard, I understand that there's going to be a list released of preachers that are preaching good news and faith in addition to your pastor as well that you meditate on. I do this on a daily basis. When I'm in my car, if, uh, if you're working out, okay, at night when you're going to sleep, it may sound weird, but so what? You're already in the kingdom. If you're in the kingdom, guess what? You're weird. Get over it. No, you see, you try to fit in anywhere else. You're weird, but you're exceptionally weird. Glory be to God. You are the salt of the entire earth. You're the ecclesia. That is the church, the Greek word for the word church in the New Testament. That means you are a part of a set aside group of powerful, influential, gathered people. That's why with this COVID-19, Satan doesn't want the believers to gather together because the corporate anointing that's available when saints come together changes the world. He'd love to stop that. Now, we do, we practice what we need to practice. We obey the laws of the land. But, now watch this. Let me move here. Now, so I'm making a habit of depositing the word of God in my ears as a lifestyle. No other generation has had the opportunity with technology to do this like you do right now. Set it up. Make a decision today. I am going to keep that word going in my ears. The word of instruction, that's to preach word. Okay, now watch this. Now, don't let them depart from your eyes. Now, this is where we miss it. Now, I've got to tell you, this part can particularly be difficult even for me. I'm telling you what. It's, we can muster, we can deal with hearing the word, turning on the word, and you need to turn it on as much as you can, TV, so forth. But putting the word in our eyes is absolutely necessary. Start small with practical applications of this. Do this, and I hear this in the Holy Ghost. Every opportunity to put your eyes on the word, take it. For example, when pastor is preaching on, uh, on Sunday or, or on Bible study, when you're listening to it, open up your Bible and follow along. That's the word going in your eyes. Do you see that? Now, in addition to your own reading, now I will say this, your own reading and studying of the word can be a little problematic if you're not understanding that what you're reading is good news. And until you understand that, you need to keep following along with what your pastor is preaching, glory be to God. Keep following along with the anointing that's being preached to you. So what are you reading during the week? I know we feel like we're beyond this. I'm reading what my pastors are preaching, glory be to God. Pastor preached on such and such subject from this text during the week. I take some time out and I go and read that and meditate on that. In addition to that, whatever you're standing for, here's number two, go in the word and find your situation. Now you'll have an energy to read the word if what you're reading is relevant to what you need and what you're dealing with. 
Does that make sense? Go in the word. I need, I have financial issues. I need to go in the word and start looking up everything the word has to say about my finances. And you'll see that an energy will come to read those things. I need, I have marital issues. I need to see what the word says about marriage. And I'm looking at that, putting it in my eyes. Now the text here says, don't let it depart. Your lifestyle should never consist of the absence of putting the word in your eyes. Your flesh will try to talk you out of that and say it's not necessary. No, you need to make a commitment to a regimen of getting that word in your eyes as well as your ears as a lifestyle. Now, how often should you practice doing this? Are you ready for this? Now, don't shout me down. Daily. Daily. The kingdom of God works when you practice its principles daily. Give us this day our daily bread. Putting the word in your eyes and your ears is your daily bread, your daily responsibility. Now watch this, and we'll get more into this tomorrow. Everything in the kingdom of God works by hearing or deposit, believing, and saying. Not working hard. Hear, believe, say, and action that corresponds to what you deposited, what you believe, and what you say. That's how the kingdom works. So the labor is not working hard to make sure you don't sin Monday through Saturday. Now, sinning is not good, and that'll affect you, glory be to God. It'll stop the blessing. You must understand that. But the labor is on the deposit of the word of God into the heart through the eye gate and the ear gate. Where healing is concerned, the best way to get healed when you are dealing with the sickness is to meditate and deposit the word concerning healing day and night. When you, are, when you need to be healed, you don't have time to do anything else when you need to be healed. You don't got time to watch regular TV. You don't have time for any of that. Watch regular TV after you get your healing, okay? But when you are sick and you need to be healed, that's what you need to spend your time on, and you need to stay consistent with it. Don't stop. You know, in the New Testament, the word patience is actually translated constancy. Add to your faith constancy or patience meaning being consistently constant, doing the same thing all the time. Well, pastor, I tried it and it didn't work. Are you doing it consistently? No, you're not. You know, you, you try to get around it. You know you're not doing it. It's okay because from this day forward, you're going to do it. As a matter of fact, let's say that right now. From this day forward, I am a hearer and I am a doer of the word of God consistently and it's working for me right now in the name of Jesus. Is it working later? Yes, it will, but it's working for me right now in Jesus' name. All right, does that make sense? Now, watch this. I don't have a lot of time. I got, I got to get this out. Now, notice here, verse 21, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the mist the mist means the middle right here, right? In the mist or the middle of your heart. So we see here what goes in the heart is a byproduct of what's put in front of the eyes or the ears. On the internet, on movies, anything you're watching, good or bad, you're giving permission to go to your heart and your heart is going to produce it. If you're having financial issues, you've deposited uh, financial problems in your eyes and your ears. Do you see that? If you're having emotional issues, what are you giving your eyes and your ears to? Okay? You've got to correct that. Now, verse 23. For they are life to those who find them. Now, the benefit of life right here is synonymous with the Greek word used for life in the New Testament which is the word zoe. 
Zoe is the life force of God. One picture it paints in the Greek is that it is like a high-powered super battery, all right? Supernatural battery power plant, all right? Like a power, nuclear power plant that makes everything it comes in contact with it it comes in contact with work or increase or made better. Now, Jesus made a statement concerning Zoe. He says, I came that you would have life or Zoe, watch this, more abundantly or full to the overflow. Now, as true as that is, if you don't make a commitment to putting those words that bring life in your eyes and your ears so that it can get to your heart, you'll never see manifestation of it. So it doesn't happen automatically. It requires your cooperation. Now, let me tell you something. You can't pray over that. I just sense the Holy Ghost saying that I've got to say it. You can't pray to get that result. You know, Paul really quickly with the thorn in the flesh made us, when Paul went to Jesus about the thorn in the flesh, he prayed and Jesus responded with instruction. His prayer opened him up to revelation knowledge of God's right way of doing things and then he acted on it. He prayed and said, Lord, this thorn in the flesh, Jesus responds and says, my grace is sufficient meaning my power is ready to be used in this situation to fight on your behalf. And when Paul got that, he said, well, now it's time to praise glory be to God. I would rather glory. Every time the enemy attacks, I go into praise so that I can activate that dunamis power that's inside of me to go to work in that situation. Ah, that's another another story. I got to get back to my text. See, so you're taking me off. I got five minutes left. Now, watch this. I, I just want to run. I, I get excited. I heard Bill Woodson said, he said, I get so high when I'm preaching that I can't even see. <laughs> now, now, watch this. Uh, For they are life to those who find them, and watch this, and health to all their, King James says, flesh. In the Hebrew right here, health is also translated medicine. The word of God is actual medicine to your physical body. Medicine that cannot be overdosed on. You can never get enough. Now, depending on the severity of the sickness dictates the necessity of deposit. Big sickness, big deposit. Do you get that? If you're meditating on the word and healing is not coming, now you're going to have to believe it before you see it no matter what, but if assurance that you're healed is not coming in your heart, if you're not becoming convinced that you are healed, then you're not meditating enough. You've got to Make it priority and spend time meditating. Symptoms get stronger and you find yourself going into fear concerning your healing. You're not meditating enough. You meditate more. How much? As much as it takes. Now, I'm telling you, this is how you, if you want to get healed on purpose. Now, I'm not telling you what I think. This is working for me, glory be to God. If I was sick, you'd never know about it because I'd be doing this behind closed doors. You hear me? Until I got what I'm believing for. That's how faith works. We keep believing until we get it. Now watch this. The word of God deposited in the eyes and the ears goes to the heart and then translates to medicine for the physical body. Now if we were taking more of this medicine, notice that this medicine is spiritual. Those words are spirit. Why is that? Because the sickness and disease has a spiritual root to it, not a natural root. 
You're just trying to fix it naturally. You're putting band-aids on it. There's a spiritual root to this. So the word of God, when it's declared, and we'll talk about that tomorrow, when faith is released, it goes to the root of the situation, okay? There could be other issues. There could be unforgiveness going on. Where healing is concerned, you always need to make sure you have forgiven. Now watch this. Keep their health to all their body <clears throat> or the flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. You're going to guard what's going in to your eyes and your ears. You cannot receive healing and deposit junk in your eyes and your ears. You can't deposit both. You can't deposit the good news of the word of God and feed on things that are contrary to the word of God and the things that are bad news and your heart, that's, the two are going to cancel each other out. You can't, your heart needs, can only grow one sort of fruit at, the, at a time. Does that make sense? All right, two minutes. I got to hurry up and finish this. Now, really quick, and we're going to get into this tomorrow. For out of it, out of the heart, flow or are the issues of life. Now notice verse 24, he says, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips from you, far from you. There is a connection with the eyes, the ears, the heart, and the mouth where your healing is concerned. And we will pick up in our next, se our next session concerning the, the, the importance of spoken words where the meditating of the word of God is concerned and manifestation of healing. Very, very important. Thank you for joining us one more time. I'm excited about our next session tomorrow. We will see you then. God bless you. Thank you for joining in.